Hello, welcome to this video on organizational structures. So in this video, you need to be able to explain what an organizational structure or chart shows, analyze the pros and cons of two types of structure, tall versus short, and then finally, we need to be able to analyze the pros and cons of a matrix structure. So let's start off with what an organizational structure is, and there's an example here at the bottom. An organization structure tells us the way the roles within the business are arranged. And this can be illustrated in an organizational chart, which we can see below. So we have the people who operate within the business, their roles and responsibilities and how the business is organized. So we can see the job roles within the business. For example, the first person here is the director of communications whereas this person is the vice president of marketing. We can see who is responsible for what and for whom. So we can see that the person at the top of the structure here is responsible for these three people who report to him below. And we can also see the communication channels that operate throughout the business. So if the company needs to send a message to this worker down here, we can see the structure in which is going to be passed through the organization to reach that worker. So this is what we can see from an organizational chart, how the business staff, this is a human resources topic, are going to function and operate. So let's just make sure we've got some notes in our, sorry, some key terms in our notes. An organizational structure is the framework of a business that shows how it is managed and organized. Now the first proper key term is the hierarchy, and that's the number of levels in an organizational structure. So how many layers are there? The previous example had three. The chain of command shows us the route through which authority is passed down through an organization. And finally, the span of control. This shows us the number of subordinates reporting to the manager or supervisor. So a subordinate is someone who works sub underneath um, a manager or a supervisor. So how many people directly report to the manager or supervisor? Span of control. So we're going to look through this video at an example. And the example here is of Looney Lizard Creations. This is a handmade, customized greeting card company started four years ago by Amy. She initially started the business herself, but has now expanded and she now has nine employees. And here we can see the organizational chart for Looney Lizard Creations. We can see Amy at the top. She's the director. She's the entrepreneur that started the business. And then we can see her other staff and how they've organized. She's organized them into a sales department and a production department. Within that department, there is a manager, and then she has teams below. So let's go through some questions and see how we use this uh, organizational chart. The first one is, who is Jane's line manager? Now, Jane is the production manager. Who is her line manager? Who does she report to? Well, the correct answer is Amy. How many subordinates does Bob have? How many people working below or report to Bob? Well done, that's three. Who can Amy delegate tasks to? Delegation is passing on responsibility for completion of a task, and she can delegate down to Bob and to Jane. How many levels of hierarchy are there within this organization? How many levels? Well, we can see there's a team, managers, and directors, so three. And who has authority over the sales team? Well, that would be Bob. So now let's look at span of control. Span of control refers to the number of subordinates that a manager is in direct control of. A wide span of control means there are many subordinates, and a narrow span of control means there are few subordinates. So here, Jane has a wider span of control than Bob. The chain of command is the path of authority along which instructions are passed down from the CEO, the chief executive officer in this case, director. Organizations with few levels of hierarchy, short chains of command, are known as flat structures, whereas organizations with many levels of hierarchy and long chains of command are known as tall structures. So we've looked at organizational chart and we've introduced the idea of tall versus short. We're going to analyze the pros and cons now. So let's go back to Amy's business. It's growing and she plans to hire four more production staff and she's trying to decide between two alternative organizational structures, a flat structure with three levels of hierarchy and a taller structure with four levels of hierarchy. 
So here we have an example of her flat structure. We can see that she's just introduced the more uh, the production team and just added them to the production department. A taller structure here would be to introduce a new level of hierarchy. So now we've got four levels and what she's done is reorganize the production department to introduce supervisors. We can see she's created two new roles here, the cutting supervisor and the decorating supervisor for her cards. And this might make it a little bit easier to manage rather than having Jane responsible for eight people. Jane is now just responsible for two and those supervisors are in turn just responsible for three. So what are the pros and cons of each approach? A flat or wide structure at the top and a tall or narrow structure at the bottom. Let's look at the tall or narrow structure first of all. Some of the advantages. Well, we have a narrow span of control, which means that we can closely supervise each individual subordinate. Within narrow teams like this, we can have more specialization, which may improve efficiency. There's also the opportunity for promotion here, which could be motivating. Disadvantages, well, quite slow communication. We've got quite long chains of command. And so maybe slow decision-making process. And this might cost a bit more. We've got more layers of management here. We've got supervisors and managers. So it may be uh, more expensive because we will pay their higher wages. Lastly, there's less uh, delegation going to go on here. Less passing of responsibility down. There's more tighter control of what's happening. Now let's look at the flat or the wide structure. Some advantages. A short chain of command means that vertical communication should be quick, so they might be more responsive in dynamic markets. Overhead should be lower, fewer salaries or managers to pay. Employees may be more motivated as they like to be empowered, have more authority over decision making because one manager here can't possibly make the decisions for all nine people or for all eight people operating beneath her, so they might like to have more empowerment. Some disadvantages, or well, maybe it's difficult for the manager or supervisor to be effective and may increase their stress. Quality of communication between managers and subordinates could be poor because there's so many people to communicate to. It's maybe difficult to monitor quality. And again, lack of promotional opportunities and maybe have an impact on motivation. So which one would you recommend? Well, how can we make a judgment about whether a tall or a flat structure would be better? Maybe we might think about the size of the business, the skill of the employees and the nature of their work, the leadership style, whether it's a dynamic market and the business objectives. Now let's go on to look at the pros and cons of a matrix structure. So here we can see the traditional organizational structure, top down and how the roles are organized in the business. But sometimes people will also be organized into teams or departments, sort of departments, to work on particular projects. So they might be in a particular project team as well as also their own department or function. So the business might actually be organized in more of a matrix form where we read down as well as across, like a grid, kind of like a matrix. So people might be part of project teams as well as their own department. So if we look at this example, we can see we've got the four business areas, marketing, operations, finance, and people. But we've also got teams of people working in particular projects, A, B, C, and D. So for example, someone like Lily here, who works in operations, normally she'll be in the operations department, she'll be responsible to the operations manager and be part of the operations team. But here she's also part of this particular project, which is a cross department project involving people from marketing, finance, HR and operations. So here she's part of two, two kind of areas of the business, the operations department where she operates as part of the operations team and also this project team where we have a team leader over here for the project and then she's part of a cross department team. Similarly here for Eddie, who's in the finance department, he normally works as part of the finance team, doing finance jobs under the supervision of the finance manager. But he's also part of this Project D, and they have a team leader. And this Project D involves people from marketing, operations, finance, and human resources. It's important that sometimes the, the different departments of the business talk to each other and work together on particular projects. So we call this a matrix structure. What are the advantages? 
Well, it helps to break down traditional department barriers, improving communication. Individuals get to use skills within a variety of contexts, maybe offering more uh, motivation for different styles of work. It encourages the sharing of good practice and ideas across departments. Some disadvantages. Members of project teams may have divided loyalties if they report to two line managers. There may not be a clear line of accountability for project teams. More difficult to coordinate and difficult to divide up people's times. And if they're working for the project, they might be neglecting their responsibilities in their departments. So in this video, we've looked at an organizational chart. We've looked at tool versus short and matrix and the pros and cons of each. That's it. Thanks very much for listening.